Welcome back everyone to another video and in today's episode we will create a somewhat of an interactive foliage. So as you can see over here I have this sphere, I have this grass right here and if we move this around you can see that the grass is trying to bend away from this sphere. Uh, also it works for character, it's not that great for the character but as you can see it still does try to move away a little bit. It's not perfect, uh, but this is as close as I can get it to work. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's get started. So I have a little bit of foliage already painted over here in this level. This is the grass from the June's free assets. So I've used the stylized forests, meshes, plants, the SM grass 01. So this guy right here. But before we can begin, we need to enable one of the settings in our project, project settings. So go ahead, go to the settings, project settings, and look for the mesh and scroll down till you find the engine lighting, no, uh, engine rendering. And then there's a section called lighting. And the first thing is generate mesh distance fields. So you need to enable this. And once you will, uh, for Unreal Engine 4, it's going to ask you to restart this. For Unreal Engine 5, this is enabled already by default, at least at the point while uh, when I'm recording this, it was uh, enabled already on Engine 5. So uh, once you do that, the engine will restart and then it's going to build these distances. And once it's done, go to your uh, model or look for its material. So we're going to look for this one. So we have the grass instance. Obviously, the instance is not going to do the trick. We need the actual material. So look for the parent from which this instance is created. And we're going to do some adjustments in that one. So this is the main material used for this model right here. And go ahead, find the world position offset pin and just follow it so that you can move these nodes aside. So these nodes right here are used for the wind. So you can actually see this over here. So simple, simple grass wind. This is where and how it gets generated. We're also going to use this, but for now we're going to move this aside so that we can implement our changes. So uh, let's go ahead, let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to look for a node called distance from uh, distance to distance to nearest surface. So this is going to help us know when some kind of an object is close to the grass to make it bend. And over here, what we want to do is we want to subtract, subtract. And then whenever we subtract, we need to specify an amount that we want to subtract. So I'm going to make this into a scalar parameter. And uh, let's give this a value of 20. So this is going to be default value is going to be 20 and we're going to call this radius because this is essentially the radius. Uh, so uh, how far away from the mesh the things start to bend. So I'm going to use radius of 20. Obviously, you can adjust this. Uh, the bigger you make this, the further away the grass will bend from uh, from objects, basically. So then from the subtract, we want to do one minus. And once we have done that, we want to make sure that we clamp this value so that it doesn't go too high or too low. We want to keep this within 0 and 1. Now that we have done that, the next thing that we want to do is we want to look for another node called distance, uh, distance field gradient to smooth out this, uh, this motion of the grass basically so that the bends are not too sharp. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's not going to look that great. So once we have got this node, we want to multiply these two together. So I'm going to hold M and click. It's going to give me the multiply node and we're going to multiply these values basically together. Now that we have done that, we need to multiply this a little more. So another multiply node and we want to multiply this with again with another scalar. And this is going to be like the strength of this. So how much the grass actually bends. So I'm just going to call this power or strength, whatever. Let's plug that into our B route and let's give this some value. Now the value should be within the couple of uh, first thousands. So I'm going to make mine something like 2000. 1000 isn't going to be a lot. 2000 is going to be a little bit more. Uh, obviously don't go too high, don't go too low, but just experiment with, with this value a little bit. So if you want it to move more, give it more. If you want it less, give it less. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to get the vertex normals. So right click, let's look for vertex uh, normal VS, so world space. And then from here, again, we can, uh, not again, but this time we need to add instead of multiply. So we want to combine these together. 
So it's going to give us the world space and it's going to give us the calculations that it's made for how far it needs to bend. And then it's going to uh, basically know the position where it should be. And then we can clamp this so it doesn't go too wild just in case. And I'm going to give this some kind of values, let's say from minus 20, uh, not 200. So minus 20 up until 20. Uh, so that's the uh, radius in which it can actually bend just in case if it calculates something more or less. So it doesn't look too awkward. We're going to just keep it in check. So, uh, and that's basically it. Now we need to combine these two together so that we have the wind and so that we have the motion. So what I'm going to do is just simply add both of these together. So we're going to add our calculation. So if you don't have the wind, this can go directly into the world position offset. If you have wind and you want to use it, just combine these two together. And then this value can go inside of our world position offset. Now, each time we make some changes to the material, it's going to take its time. Uh, it's going to be a little bit longer than usual to uh, to basically save and apply everything and also every time it's going to require you to recompile the shaders for this specific model so this is going to take a couple of seconds so as you can see it's compiling shaders it doesn't see the grass so we're gonna wait a couple of seconds it's gonna do that meanwhile oh it's already done let's go ahead and let's bring in some kind of a shape so I'm gonna bring in a sphere move it up a little bit and now you will see real time whenever I move this that the grass is bending away from this model. The wind still works and it's bending nicely away. So obviously at this point, uh, of course we can make it as big as we want. I'm gonna make a couple of these just so they're on top of each other like this, scale a couple of them down maybe like so. And also I'm going to enable physics for all of these so that they would drop down and we would see this nice effect when we hit play. So there we go, we can move this and the grass moves with it. Now unfortunately as you can see it does not move with my character and there is another problem. The grass is floating. So first let's fix the floating part. So the issue with that is the fact that well uh, there is a surface over here. So it's the same for landscape, it's the same for meshes. In this case obviously I'm using a mesh but it's it doesn't matter. Uh, so there is a surface over here and it is detecting it and so it is moving away from this. As you can see here are the actual mesh and here is the visual part of it. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to select that mesh or landscape, go to the details, scroll down till we find the lighting then for you by default it will look like this so check click on this show advanced scroll down a little bit till you see the effect distance field lighting so whenever you will click that to false you can see it instantly drops to the ground and it no longer detects the uh, the ground basically it only will detect the models that have this enabled which is basically every model because all of them will have this enabled by default now it does not detect our character as you can see so for that we're going to make a small cheat we're going to uh, add basically a sphere to our character to the feet of our character well more so to the capsule of our character which is then going to uh, bend this grass away from us so what we need to do is first we obviously we want to make this invisible so that we can't really see it. So let's go ahead and let's create ourselves a uh, invisible material. So let's invisible mat. Let's open this up. What I'm going to do is basically click one and one, hold one and uh, click twice. We're going to give this some kind of a color, zero should be black, and then the opacity also needs to be zero so that it is transparent. But by default, we don't have the opacity, so select the base node, scroll down till you find the blend mode and make this translucent. Now we have the opacity. So we can save that and the material is good to go. There we go. So the material is invisible. That's all good. Let's go ahead. Let's open up our character now. And inside of our character, let's go ahead and let's add ourselves a sphere. And let's make sure that this sphere right here uses the invisible material so that, well, this sphere is not visible. Here we go. We have the sphere. Let's move it down. Maybe let's make this a little bit smaller. Something like this, perhaps. 
obviously totally depends. You might have to scale this up or down based on your preferences. And then let's scroll this down and let's make sure that we uh, have no collision for this. There we go. Let's hit play. And now you can see that the grass is moving, but I think it's a little too small. So maybe, maybe I scaled this down too much. So maybe the default size would work just fine. And uh, now it seems a little bit too much. So obviously you can experiment with this. You might maybe want to use two instead of one perhaps. So it totally depends on the settings you apply to this. So now, as you can see, it is a little bit better. Obviously, you will still have to experiment with the values. Uh, you can make the sphere bigger. Obviously, you can make the uh, the radiuses bigger or smaller, the power more or less. So all of these things are still adjustable. Uh, it's totally up to you how you decide to adjust this. But yeah, I think this is pretty cool. Uh, we can do all kinds of cool things with it. It looks amazing. It does bend our grass away. So that's exactly what we wanted. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you found this useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe. I upload twice a week. Uh, yeah, see you in the next one.